Hi guys, it's Shaftman from Shaftman TV. I hope you're well. I'm just sat in my office at the moment, thinking actually, and thinking about the Nobel Peace Prize winner, Richard Thaler, who was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize uh, on Monday, great honor, no doubt, for his work in behavioral economics. Now, he's a really important figure along with the other uh, prominent behavioral economic uh, thinkers, actually. And he provides an insight into human decision-making, essentially, because previously, uh, in cl sort of classic economics, there was a notion that, that the consumer, the investor, the person was completely rational and the person always acted in their own self interest and always acted in a very logical and uh, yeah a very logical manner but Thaler has shown that this is essentially not the case and this insight is important uh, for us to grasp in our personal lives in our investing life and just generally speaking actually so He's got a number of theories, actually, and one of them is the nudge theory. And it's and it's a theory that people often choose the easier option as opposed to the wise option. And he's been working with some governmental organizations to try and assist with fixing diets and certain habits. And he's carried out quite a bit of research in this area. Uh, one of the famous ones uh, related to a supermarket where by placing healthier items at eye level, it encouraged people to actually pick up healthier items and to buy healthier items or to put, say, a healthy salad cart at the start of a supermarket as opposed to at the end of the supermarket encourages people to do so and to, to buy healthy food. Another example is in the UK at the moment, you have to opt in to have your organs used for medical research. And obviously many people you know, can die unexpectedly and their organs are not used. In Spain, the system is the opposite. You have to opt out and say that you don't want your organs to be used for medical research. And as a result, uh, Spain is a world leader in sort of organ uh, organs and you know like uh, that that side of medicine because most people don't are not are, are, you know like a kind of indifferent to this so the lesson here is that there is a lot to be said for life being frictionless for people and to make things convenient because essentially people will take the easy option. They're not always going to take the wise option, you know, because obviously, I mean, um, the, the behavioral uh, economic guys, you know, list a number of factors like obesity. If people took the wise option, then, you know, there wouldn't be prevalent obesity. So the nudge theory is really important. Like, can we change our habits and can we nudge people through sort of convenience to make to make better choices, to make choices in our long-term interest. Okay, so pretty fascinating stuff. Another theory that Thaler's come up with is the concept of mental accounting, where we as human beings, with our money, put our money into different little categories, and we treat those categories, com categories completely different, even though the money's coming from the same source. And this research, I, I think, has been exploited somewhat by credit card companies, which show that people spend a lot more on a credit card than they do when they have to pay cash. And this is due to, as I say, Thaler's theory of mental accounting, because inside of your mind, a credit card doesn't really feel like cash. It feels, it doesn't, it doesn't feel real so you know you can buy an extra beer or coffee or you can buy that dress that you want because it doesn't really feel real and that insight 
has been extreme, probably very lucrative to online payment companies and credit card companies and the such like. So very interesting, actually, to understand the psychology behind that. Um, another um, theory that Thaler has come up with, and I think this was in conjunction with uh, Daniel Kahneman, is the something called the endow, endowment effect. And it's where people place a higher value on something that they already own. So basically, you know, the value of a product shouldn't really depend upon ownership. But they carried out an experiment where they gave half of the subjects in this experiment a cup. And then half of them didn't have a cup. And then they asked each member of the experiment to value the cup. And the people who had a cup valued the cup double the value than people that didn't have a cup. And this is really important, actually, in investing or, you know, in life that, that, that we place a huge value on the things that, that we already own. Because technically, we are somewhat in a vacuum. And what He's, what this data shows is that we shouldn't cling on to material goods. We shouldn't cling on to things because we're, we're placing a much higher value on, say, those stocks that we've fallen in love with and that we think are amazing when really uh, maybe we're, we're completely misguided. But it's it, the endowment effect can affect people's lives in many, many different ways. But is really fascinating, actually, the actual uh, information. Um, another theory that Thaler comes up with is that the more information that you have should logically lead to better decision making. And Thaler showed that, that this really isn't the case because when we get more information, we often become overconfident. And that overconfidence could obviously lead to poor decision making. Now, this again is really relevant in life, you know, with uh, thinking we're making a one way bet uh, in relation to investments or something in our personal life that we think we know everything. And it's this, it's this mental um, sort of um, uh, mental affliction. I don't, I can't find a better word for it that uh, you know makes us extraordinarily overconfident and that really is the start of when probably a lot of problems happen for us because we think it's a one-way bet we think we can't lose we think we're not going to fail and we think we know everything and it's very difficult to know everything and this has obviously been challenged by the money ball strategy that is employed by certain sports franchise and certain uh, in, inside of certain sports, that if you gather all the information about a player, then you'll be able to make rational decisions. And Thaler says that often we become overconfident because of that, um, you know, knowledge that we have. Um, another theory of his, which I really like actually, is this concept of fairness. And this is really um, interesting in relation to pricing. Now, Basically, we don't really know what the value of the goods that we buy are. We don't really know how much a coffee should really be. We know what the cost price of a coffee is. It's about five cents, five pence. But we don't really know how much a coffee should be. And we often uh, derive value from what we think is fair. Now that's that's absolutely fine, but then the question is, are the company that we're buying from are they are they advertising in such a way to convince us that a certain price is fair? So um, the exper an experiment was done in relation to this where uh, umbrellas were being sold for say five dollars, and when it started to rain, the price of the umbrellas went to six dollars. And subjects thought that that was very, very, very unfair. And because they they thought that, 
you know, there wasn't, uh, you know, like it didn't make sense or, or, you know, it wasn't logical. But technically speaking, the utility of an umbrella when it's sunny is a lot lower than when it's raining. But participants didn't feel like such a price hike of 20% was fair. So this is something which is important, I think, for advertisers and in business generally and with pricing, because if you get the pricing right of a product, then you know it is a massive deal you know it's a massive issue for a large company so say if you look at the price of razor blades and razors gillette razors if you go and look in the supermarket they can be you know like 15 pounds 20 pounds to buy the razor uh, to buy the actual razor and then buy the blades as well so who decides whether that's fair or not but that but gillette somehow have managed to convince consumers that that's a fair price, you know. But really, you and I know that a razor probably costs, probably made in China and probably costs 10 cents to make. Or fever tree drinks, for example, they've managed to convince uh, consumers that, that their drinks are premium value and a lot better, but they are effectively 10 times the price of um, you know, um, other alternatives, but that's because consumers think that's a f think that that's a fair price. But there's no doubt that the cost of production of of tonic or ginger beer, whatever fever tree produced, is the same unit cost as say the supermarket's own brand. So this concept of fairness and what we think's fair to pr pay for an asset doesn't necessarily reflect the value the utility that we're getting from the asset and uh, what Thaler and Kahneman are saying to you is that basically the value is something completely different from what you're actually paying for it often it's completely two separate things and you should be aware of, of uh, the psychology of that and also we can make uh, a wider implication about the stock market, about prices on the stock market, about the price of cars or the price of any product that that really is driven by people, buyers, who are willing to pay a certain price. And that sets the price. It doesn't necessarily reflect value for money. So really fascinating, really fascinating stuff. And I think it's really important that, that the classic, classical economic and uh, stance of people being rational and logical is challenged because it really isn't true and you know people are not rational people are highly irrational and there's m much evidence um, to actually prove that and it's good to be self-aware and to understand areas of your life and my life where we're irrational and where uh, we maybe think we have a logical position, but we're really very biased. We're really very dogmatic. We really are using information that's out of date or information that is imperfect. And, you know, so it requires a bit of humility. So, yeah, I think that uh, Thaler really deserves his Nobel Peace Prize. And I think he's a he's a interesting guy and he's a great guy to read so if you if you get a chance read some of his books read some of the experiments that him and Kahneman have done and it makes interesting reading they're very, very thought-provoking so cool I hope you enjoyed the video I really love these this type of stuff behavioral economics um, if you got any comments or anything that I've missed out pop a little comment in the comments box if you can subscribe to my channel, Shaftman TV, I'll be delighted. And I wish you a fab evening. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.